Hey everybody, uh, my name is Kenshada Daniels and I am the instructor uh, for the master's course that you guys have enrolled in. So the portion of the course that I will be instructing um, and teaching on is the insurance contracts and billing, submitting claims and all of those type of things that go along with um, securing the insurance contracts and then once you get the contracts how to conduct your billing and submit claims so let's dive right on in so the first um, section that we're gonna cover will be uh, let's let me look at my um, lesson plan okay so the first thing we will cover is how to become a provider so I'm located in Florida and in Florida and many other states as well, um, we can we have the option of having a non-medical home care agency, a home health agency, which is um, can be skilled or non-skilled. So um, for those of you that um, have a non-medical home care agency, um, a lot of my information will be geared towards those type of businesses versus the home health agency. Um, all, although the home health agency can benefit from my information and do the same thing, um, I want to uh, focus more on the non-medical home care agencies. So if you have a non-medical home care agency and you have your Medicaid ID number, uh, your national provider um, ID number, which is your MPI. If you have your MPI, then you can apply to become a provider with uh, some of the most well-known insurance companies across the nation. You can become a provider with them. So as long as you have your Medicaid provider number and your MPI, then you can move forward with submitting an application. So the in the initial stages, you would reach out to the insurance companies to find out if they have any, um, um, if they're accepting any new um, home care providers. Once you find out if they're accepting any uh, new home care providers, then you can proceed to do the, um, it's like an intake form. So you'll understand what I'm what I'm talking about. For example, if you're here in Florida, you know we have Sunshine Health, which recently merged with Stay Well and Well Care, and they're all under the umbrella of Centene. So if you go to the Sunshine Health uh, website, they have an intake form. So once you click on become a provider or join their network, you will fill in and complete the intake form. So you will upload different documents depending on the things that they're asking you for. So once you upload those documents and they are accepted, they receive them and they are needing providers in your area, then they'll reach out to you to start the credentialing process. Okay. So that's the initial steps that you need to take. So next we're going to move right in into the uh, credentialing process. Okay, so I will cover the uh, credentialing process and then also what, let's see, what do I do next? Okay, so the credentialing process um, can last anywhere from, you know, one week to a few weeks. It depends on you because basically during this process, you will provide, will be providing the insurance company with the documents that they request from you. So it can be anywhere from, uh, you know, your copy of your liability insurance, copy of your state license. Here in Florida, ACA, they are the governing body for um, our home care licensing. So we would send them the license that we received from ACA. You would also send them, um, any necessary policies and procedures, depending on which insurance company that you um, you try to join their network, certain insurance companies ask for different documents. Okay, 
So the next section that we will be discussing is the credentialing process. Um, the credentialing process is when you've already completed the initial intake form on the insurance company's website. So during this process, they will ask you to um, send in required documents. So they will require, and these are just a few things um, that they will ask you to provide in order to, you know, of course, secure the contract. So here's a list of some of the items that they will ask you for. Uh, you have to make sure that you have a, um, let's see. Okay. You have to make sure that you have liability insurance. Um, it is a must that, of course, in Florida, for the um, non-medical home care agencies, liability insurance is not required, but as a business owner, sending um, caregivers into the homes of your clients, you want to make sure that you have liability insurance. So they'll ask you to send in your um, insurance uh, certificate, which you get that from the insurance company. So you'll have to send in your insurance verification. Also, state licensing. Um, here in Florida, ACA is our governing body of our non, uh, non-medical non home care agencies. So they give us a license once we apply for it and it is approved, they send us a copy of it. So you want to make sure that you have a copy of your license in your state on hand. Also, some of the insurance companies ask for a business tax receipt or um uh, and here in Florida, it's it's called business tax receipt. But this is something that you get at your local uh, tax collector's office. Um, or, you know, some states may have it under as an occupational license. But this is something that you have to go to the local office in your town, in your city, uh, where you live and obtain this. Like I said, for instance, United Healthcare is one of the companies that will ask you for that as well. So also, um, if you have any um, personal licensing, um, like for me, I am a nurse. I do have a LPN license. So some of the insurance companies will offer you a personal uh, contract that's not related to your non-medical uh, home care agency that you can get contracted to do uh, you know, nursing services, skill services. So that is also an option to those of you who uh, may hold a um, LPN license, RN license, or what have you. But those are just a few things, um, a list of documents that they will ask you. I do go more in depth um, into the whole process and um, also with a list of documents that I've provided. I am currently contracted with, I believe it's four or five insurance companies. Also some other private companies that I'm also uh, contracted with. And FYI, if you do want to get contracted with any of the um, third party companies who service our veterans, you will need a bond. Um, alongside having liability insurance, you will also be required to have a bond and you can get that from the insurance companies as well. And also the amount of the bond is up to you, but the bond is to cover your employees that, you know, not everybody is honest. So in case one of your caregivers go to a client's home and they steal some of their jewelry, valuables, whatever, the bond will cover that. That's the um, purpose of it, but it is required to service veterans. So if that's on your to-do list, to service veterans, then you will need to have a bond. So the credentialing process, like I said, it could take up to uh, several weeks. And then once that process, once you've submitted all the documents, they will then have to review them. If there aren't any errors or discrepancies, then um, you will be approved. Now, once you're approved, they will send over you a contract. So the contract, will actually be the next phase.
Okay, so contract. In this section, we will discuss the contract. Um, typically, when you receive the contract, it will go through their um, their guidelines, how long the contract will be for, and what is expected of you and your company and your caregivers, and also your reimbursement rate. So different companies have different rates. And if you don't know what the reimbursement rate is, it's what the company will pay you. So in turn, once you figure out how much they're going to pay you for each service, then you can determine how much you will pay your caregivers uh, for performing those services. And then also what you will be able to um, pocket back into your business. So for the non-medical home care agencies, um, and even if you do have a home health agencies, um, some of the service that you can bill for are the same. So we have the homemaker, companion, and respite. Okay, so those are the services that I will be discussing. But for those of you who have home health or a home health exemption license, you can also offer personal care services. So the reimbursement rate ranges from... Uh, it can start at $16 and go all the way up to $21 per hour per service. So like if, for example, if you are providing personal care services, that will be at the top end of the reimbursement rate. So you actually be able to get your $21, $20 an hour um, reimbursement, depending on which insurance company you're billing for. Now, the um, homemaker and companion, usually their um, rates are about the same within a dollar or two difference. So depending on, again, the insurance company um, that you're contracted with, you will determine your reimbursement rate. So why is it important to know um, your reimbursement rate? because you will be sending caregivers out to the homes and then you will be paying them. So also you want to offer them a fair um, hourly rate, you know, especially for those who may have to travel, you know, 30 miles or more to get to a client. You want to offer them, um, if you don't pay gas miles, you want to offer them a little bit more in their hourly rate to balance things out, you know, to make it fair. You know, so I do have a rate reimbursement rate sheet already um, typed up for some of the common insurance companies, you know, like your United Health Care, your Stay Well, your Florida Community Care, um, you know, a little, a few um, private companies in there as well, and also one company that I'm personally contracted with for the veterans. So that will be sent to you via email for you to use as a guideline and a reference to determine, okay, how much do I want to pay my caregivers for performing, you know, the various services that you can offer and also bill for. So um, that will be sent to you. Uh, also, when you're talking about uh, reimbursement rates, you also want to make sure that you keep a list of Okay, so let's discuss claims, submissions. All right, so with all the health insurances that are out there, there are two main platforms right now that they're using for the EVV system. That's the electronic system for your caregivers to clock in and clock out with the insurance companies as they go and complete visits. So we have the HHA exchange and then we have the TELUS. Both, of, both portals um, you can go in and submit claims through them, or you can also uh, purchase a third-party vendor for your claims that will also send the information of your caregivers clock in, clock outs to either HHA Exchange or the TELUS portal. So um, I do have a insurance contracts and Medicaid application course where I do show you a video. I give you a video inside the course that shows you how to submit claims and things of that nature. Um, so I, for those of you who will schedule a 
um, appointment with me along with receiving this video, then I will go into more details. And I hope that all the information that I've covered has benefited you also with the information that I will share with you during our one-on-one consultation. So thank you for signing up for the master's course.